the, the leaders of that peace movement were always the soldier in the field who either refused to fire or fracked his officers or made sure that his, uh, at the last minute, his weapon was pointed upwards. These mutinies, this of the soldier, caused the greatest difference, the greatest reduction of the soldier's working day. That is the proportion of R&R, &R, rest and recreation, to active duty in the field was higher. And this had been forced on, on, the, on the military <clears throat> by soldiers, diverse soldiers, who were who didn't want to kill, didn't want to fight. And there were a, f a few, I forget their name, maybe some of you remember, some Marines who joined the, the National Liberation Front, the liberation fighters of Vietnam. Read something they were called. I agree with Brendan that the methodology of who done it is misleading. Brendan, I agree with you 100% that we need to analyze these things in terms of class forces. But I don't believe that we scholars and uh, so-called Marxists have done a good job on that. I mean, I wish I'd attended the Black Lives Matter session earlier today, but I feel the need, we must know who pays the police, to whom are the police the servants, whose interests are protected, and to start pointing the finger to them and drawing the lines. So that, I think, will help us to escape the, the ding-dong revenge story that you and I began with, to make it into a class story. Yes, question. Uh, a question, and I think, and a note, too. Because I'm from Turkey, and May Day is extremely important for us. Precisely because in 1977, there was a, what we call Bloody May Day, where 34 workers were killed and more than 136 was injured. So I think in that respect, like the importance of the May Day still carries like, to this day. And there are millions actually kind of try to gather and each time it is just banned and prohibited to meet in the Taksim Square, where later, actually, in 2013, the biggest popular protest happened. So I was then wondering, I don't know if you have something to say about this, but in general, like, what would you say about the May Day or like, its importance in the third world, other than you know, North America? Or I'd love to hear if you have something to say. Otherwise, I'd like to note that we also lost you know, so many people. In 1977? 1977, 34 yeah. workers were killed? Yes. At Taksim Square? Yes. Yes. 1977, 34 Turkish workers were killed in Taksim Square. Thank you. But well, we don't know if all of them were Turkish. No, many, like Kurdish, Turkish, and Armenian. Yeah. Peoples of Turkey. Yeah. Yeah. Peoples of Turkey. Yeah. Okay, so this gets back to what David was saying yeah. at the beginning. English, working classes. And certainly, just in two days, this is my experience in Toronto, on the subway, at the meeting yesterday, and today, that people in Toronto are from all over the world, and are bringing knowledge as you have brought it to me from all over. So we so it helps make it help make alive the abstraction of a global working class. Thank you. Was, and the same is true in Chicago in eighteen eighty six. I mean the people weren't from all over. Lucy Parsons is the name that is that young people are remembering now in the anarchist and youth communities in, in the USA. Her middle name was Gonzalez. She was Hispanic, she was Native American, she was African American. And she married Albert Parsons, who refused to take a drink before he was going to be hanged. And he sang the International. And he, as a young man, had been a Confederate soldier. That means he worked for the slave power. But he changed, 
and George Rowick used to teach us always, this is what I want you to remember about Albert Parsons. Not that he was a martyr to the socialist cause. You already know that. The significance is that he used to work and be a soldier for the slave power. George wanted to teach us that people can change. And as educators, as activists, as socialists, communists, and anarchists, this is what we believe too. People can change. Like the Stasi police can change very quickly. I was going to say something that there are countries where the government observes the 1st of May as a holiday, a national holiday. India is one such country. But that doesn't seem to prevent them from shooting on, uh, you know, striking workers um, and uh, when in every way being aggressive another 364 days of the year. So there is also a kind of story of celebrating May Day in a kind of a front or a facade, being a work, pro-worker state, but on the other hand, actually, the conflicts between people and the huge gap between rich and the poor, backed by police power, paramilitary power, and so on. 